Welcome to Breakeven by Breakfast, a show on the accounting channel about successful startups. I'm your host, Mark Sweepin, and today I'm joined by Sammy Start, co-founder of Transac. Transac is a single integration uh, for blockchain apps and wallets, which allows users to buy and sell cryptocurrency with everyday fiat currency. Good afternoon, Sammy, and thank you for coming on the show. How are you doing today? Good afternoon. I'm doing well. Yeah, I'm doing well. Thanks. So, Sammy, for those who haven't heard of yourself and Transac, can you tell us a bit about the company, what problem it solves, and how it all started? Right. So I'm, I'm going to describe the version that, for people that don't know too much about blockchain or cryptocurrency. So, so what Transac is, is it's a tool that allows an end user to trade a fiat currency, that is pounds, euros, USD, um, any other currency, into a cryptocurrency, which could be Ethereum, Bitcoin, or any of the other hundreds of cryptocurrencies out there. And Transac is also a developer integration. So it's also a B2B integration that can be plugged inside another app. And you can call it a, a fiat to crypto payment gateway. And the reason why you'd want to do this is that there are an increasing number of apps that are uh, using the blockchain under the hood. So they're using blockchain technology and therefore they're using cryptocurrencies. And, and what, what Transact does is it allows those apps to be used by a mainstream audience who don't own cryptocurrency. Uh, this could be anything from um, a finance product that allows you to invest um, and, and, and the user can now invest with, with uh, pounds or euros. Um, or it could be a remittance product. So you can put in pounds and then you can take out Indian rupees in an instant um, with, with very little cost. Um, and, and there are more and more uh, use cases coming up all the time. You know, things like uh, betting or, or gaming or, or anything like that. And, um, and, and that's what we do. And, and, and we're, we're growing really fast. We, you know, we, we started to do millions of dollars of volume per month now. Um, and um, and uh, we're also a venture-backed company as well. Um, I'm really interested to hear about the B2B because while you know buying cryptocurrency with fiat currency, making that transaction easy is uh, great in itself. Mm. Are you saying like with B2B applications that potentially I could go online and buy something in cryptocurrency without actually owning the cryptocurrency at that point in time? Is that how it would work, the B2B? And that's exactly right. That's exactly right. And and if you think about it, that's the whole point of that's the whole point of blockchain in the first place. Is is the previous applications where you can buy cryptocurrency is that you're just speculating on it. You're just you're just buying it because you think the price is going to go up. The whole reason why that the cryptocurrency is valuable is because it's supposed to have some kind of use case, right? And and that use case is in an, in an application. And and this is the market that we're serving. It's it's currently a niche market, you can say, but but we think that within a few years it's going to be mainstream. So everyone from from you know my parents to, to the person on the street is going to be using blockchain sort of without realizing it. Pretty apt in 2020 as well with coronavirus. You see that a lot, you know, just purely because money is a physical substance, that a lot more people are going digital and then you know nearly all altogether skipping the uh, the you know, credit cards and just going straight to blockchain and uh, digital uh, cryptocurrencies. Um, how is yeah. how's the business going so far for you? The business is going really well. Yeah. So, so we're, we're now at a stage where we've, where we've proven our initial concept. So we've shown that this is, this is something that people want. It's not just some crazy idea that, that someone had in the shower. This is actually something that people are using and, 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 you know, we're doing a few million dollars, a month in volume and we we've also proven that we can execute it right we, we can actually build the operations and the technology that can that can serve the customers and and um, we now have this kind of base on which we have to scale right so, so we're in this kind of exciting point where, where we're now you know doing our fundraising we're, we're hiring we're, we're trying to grow um, and it's a really exciting time at the moment yeah, no, I get that. It's always exciting, but also brings loads of new challenges when you're trying to scale because you're suddenly you're. I know you're switching from bootstrapping lean uh, operations to suddenly, you know, you're trying to blow out everything: sales, marketing, project development, all that stuff. Um, so, just in, in terms of uh, 
getting to where you are today and financing the business. How did you finance it orig- originally, you know, when it was just a crazy idea you had in their shower, presumably? And how is it being financed now? Did you get equity funding and, and how did you get that? So in, in the early days, um, I, I, I made a bit of money. Um, so I, I made a bit of money in 2016 by investing in cryptocurrency. So, so um, I, I also invested in, in other things as I was growing up. I've been investing since I was 18 years old. But, but I, I had a really good investment where I, where I invested in, in Ethereum and um, made, made quite a bit of money that year and quit my job. And then, and then that gave me a bit of capital, capital to, um, to put into the company. And it wasn't just the money that I put into the company. It was also obviously, if you're not, if you're not earning a salary, then, then you're, you're kind of losing money passively, if you will. Um, and then got a bit of um, grant funding into the company. Was really lucky to get that. And, so where and was that from? Was it uh, from a well-known, like a, a government body, or was it a private accelerator? No, that was that was from a from a cryptocurrency company, and, and and they were actually you know our first customer, and and they really believed in us and put some some grant funding in there. That was actually a really a really um, you know challenging thing to go through because. When, when it's your money on the line, it's, it's, you really feel the risk and, and, and it's, um, it's, it's a very emotional time. And then, and then luckily in, in um, sort of late 2019, we, we got a, a larger bit of funding from, a, um, from an accelerator program that's, that's done by a company called Consensus, which is um, very, very well known in, in, the, in the blockchain space. Yeah, I've, I've heard of Consensus before and that's, I didn't know that they had a accelerator programs actually. Um, yeah. In terms of the challenges for the business, what has been the most challenging non-financial aspect so far? Communication. And, and what, what I mean by that is, is when you're trying to describe your vision, your plans to anyone from you know, someone who you're trying to hire to someone who you know, you're fundraising off to you know, even one of your teammates, there's, there's a lot of context that's in your mind that that person doesn't have. You know, you've been doing this for years. What you're doing is built on experiences that have been happening throughout your whole life, and terms or sentences that that might just totally make sense to you, um, and just might not register with them in the same way that they register with you. So, so trying to put yourself in in the other person's shoes and and communicating is 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 really really important and and. What, what, what you notice is over the course of the, um, the business is, is that most of the challenge you have is, is just getting everyone pointing in the direction, right direction, right? Everyone, you know, m- most of the people who you work with and, and yourself are going to be working hard. But the really, really tough thing is to get all of the investors, all of the employees, all of the team pointing in the same direction, seeing the same vision. And, and, and so, so being a really, really good communicator there. Um, is, is something that I, I put a lot of work into. And I think that I'm, I'm getting quite good at it, but, but it's, it's, it's really um, a very, very uh, important skill. Yeah, no, I totally get that. And I, I know exactly where you're coming from because whenever we hire new staff, we have the same issue. Um, we have to train them and it takes an incredible amount of patience as well as clear communication on what you want to do because yeah. invariably they might mishear something or or you know, they have their own thoughts on how it should be done and you want it done a certain way. And uh, yeah, you all need to be working in the same direction. What has been the most challenging financial aspect? Something, something I would say that's, that's um, pro- probably more specific to Transac is that we're, we're keeping ledgers of, of, of our transactions in, in so many different formats and we're doing so many different transactions because we're, we're kind of like a currency exchange for cryptocurrency. So we have ledgers of our, all our bank accounts and we're supporting you know, so many different payment methods in so many different countries. So you've got ledgers all over the place there. Then we have all our different wallets on all the different blockchains and then you have ledgers of, of transactions there. And then you have the orders that are placed by users and, and you have your gas fees and, and you have, uh, there's, there's you know, too many ledgers to even go through now. And, and making sure that all of those those things are reconciled and, and adding up to what you want them to add up to is, is a challenge. And, and uh, doing that whilst growing, you know, 
thirty percent a week in volume is is very very tough. And and um, you, you're kind of you're you're doing the automations and accounting, and every time you finish that, you know, a new ledger's come up or a new revenue stream has come up, and yeah, that's and that's really tough. It sounds like an especial pain because um, I presume there's no sort of off the shelf market solution ready for your specific circumstance in that regard because there are probably so few crypto exchanges in the world because it's such a novel industry in itself um, that it's quite difficult to find. Have you found solutions to date for managing that sort of operational uh, difficulty? Yeah, so, so we're, we're, um, we're working with a company called Cryptio at the moment who, who I'd really recommend. Um, and and they, have, they have a really, a really good solution for, um, for sort of, I guess you can call it like QuickBooks for, for crypto, mm-hmm. where, where, where you're connecting your wallets instead of connecting your bank accounts and, and then tagging the transactions there. And I would say that's really, really good. Um, like us, they're, they're kind of a startup and um, they, they solve a lot of the problems that we have. Um, I don't think that there's anyone who's even experienced some of the problems that we're having. So, so a, a lot of them we're having to kind of like write our solutions, own. basically. <laughs> Yeah, we're writing we're writing code in house and, and, and yeah. solving it like that. Um, but yeah, would would recommend checking out Cryptio for for the majority of crypto accounting use mm-hmm. cases. Have any actions that you've taken in your company had negative financial impacts, and or anything that you regretted doing that if you could go back in time you'd you'd undo or wouldn't do it again? Yeah, a few things. I, I'm I'm happy to talk about it as well because I'm okay. sure other founders will go through these same things. Mm-hmm. I would say that that um, get a good accountant from the start. So don't don't wait until your um, business is taking off in order to get a good accountant because um, the work that you have to do is is much harder in retrospect. It's much easier to get the systems in place at the start and have stuff accounted for accounted for properly from the start than than to do it in retrospect and be like oh. What was that transaction that I did all those months ago? And yeah, so that's that's one thing that I would I would recommend. Uh, and another thing I would recommend is is um, is uh, yeah, just 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 try to try try to keep track of all of your liabilities that, that you owe to all your service providers. And um, if, if you're making agreements and you're signing things, then, then any liabilities that you have, they need to go on the books and, and you need to be aware of it in, in, your, in your balance sheet and, 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 and adjust your, your cash flows accordingly. Um, Thanks. And, uh, yeah, I appreciate yeah. you saying all that because no matter how hard we try to tell people, they'd never listen. And it's, it's unfortunately one of those things where you don't need to buy it and can continue operating your business without sorting it out. Yeah. You can't, sort, you can't operate your business without a website, you know, for example, but you can sort it out or operate without an accountant. So Yeah, when, when, you're, when you're setting up a company, get a good accountant, get a good lawyer, and, and all of the other stuff can be innovative and creative and, and fun, mm-hmm. but the boring stuff, the boring stuff, you know, the... the it's your bedrock, your, your foundation, so to speak. Yeah. There's, there's nothing creative or, or, or interesting there. It just needs to be done properly. Be creative and chaotic, and you know, lean starts up with all the other stuff. But, but accounting, just just do it properly, <laughs> because because uh, um, there's there's nothing to innovate on or or to win there. It's just it just needs to be done. Mm-hmm. Like like you, you shouldn't build your products really really uh, properly from the start. You know, you can you can hack it and you can be creative and chaotic, and you know, you'll probably end up scrapping it and building a better version another time later but but uh counterintuitively you have to have that like creative chaotic mindset for most areas of the business but like have the serious sensible um mindset for 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 those you know bedrock as you say yeah great and uh, so just to move on to sales and marketing in your business um it sounds like you have a mix of uh b2b and b2c but b2c yeah. might be your your bigger operation if i'm uh, correct me if i'm wrong um, how do you sort of attack both sides? Like, how do you do sales and marketing for B2C and sales and marketing for B2B? Or are they just joined together? Mm-hmm. 
So, so, so B2C is actually a larger revenue stream for us at the moment, but um, it's not our vision. So, so we, don't, we don't actively market B2C. Um, we, in this space, we've, we've developed a name and people know who we are because we, you know, we do tweets and we're working with someone, we always sort of co-market with them and, and our name gets out and um, we, we attract B2C volume through that. But um, all, pretty much all of our efforts at the moment in, in sales and marketing are going towards B2B. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cause they're, they're sort of two different beasts. Like the yeah. marketing to B2C is uh, a lot of customers, small volume marketing yeah. B2B though is it's a few customers, large volume, which you think is great, but actually the lead time into those big companies can be years, you know, so the, the whole sales cycle and I've, I've been yeah. through that and uh, yeah, they both, they both, they're not, one's not easier than the other. I found it. I found they just had different difficulties really. So, but you've got both. Yeah. You know, so. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so you're, you're trying to go to B2B more in the future. Yeah, so if you want, I can talk a bit about both and what's worked. Mm-hmm. Yeah, 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 sure. That, that'd be great. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I would say I would say B2C is 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 very much like the the throw spaghetti at the wall and see what sticks. It's it's um, <laughs> it's you have to try lots of different methods and you know you can read the textbooks and you can read the blog posts, but um, everyone's trying to market, right? So, so the, the mainstream channels that you see in the, in the guides are not going to be fruitful, right? Because they're going to be so overdone. So, so um, you have to kind of think about where your customers reside. And, and for us, you know, a lot of it's on Twitter. And, and I would say try to do your marketing for free if you can. Like, like if you're having to pay for your marketing, then... Um, it just makes it less scalable. It makes it um, the, the kind of customers you get are probably um, not uh, um, going to be a sustainable source of, of marketing for you. Mm. So, um, so, so for us, co-marketing on on Twitter has worked really well. Like when, whenever we do a, some kind of partnership with with any um, partner, we, we we usually do a tweet with them, and then they get exposed to our audience. We get exposed to their audience, and then and then. Um, I think also, also just being, being creative and, and genuine, you know, like w- whenever we post something or market something and we put like good effort into, you know, doing good diagrams and, 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 and communicating it in, in a really interesting way, like, you know, writing something that people actually want to, to see, you know, uh, people appreciate that and, and they'll, they'll share it with, with their network as well. Yeah. Um, c- content led yeah. marketing that actually gives some value to the reader, not just uh, yeah. you know, sell to them, basically, yeah. Yeah, I think anyone who's watching this who's from a marketing background is probably going to realize that I'm actually like an engineering background and I don't really know what I'm talking about. But these are just <laughs> some of the things, these are just some of the things that, that, that work for us. And, 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 you know, we have gotten a lot of marketing done for free that way. Yeah, no, that's perfect. Um, and then with B2B sales, it's more direct talking to different companies basically yeah yeah i I would say with with b2b um you have you have to think of b2b as a lot more rational and 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 logical and you have to think of b2b sales as you're you're doing a job for someone else and and your job as a salesperson is not to be slick or to to bend the truth or you know um your your job is is to is well this is the way i see it is, is is to be very honest and to and to put yourself in in that person's shoes this is this is a person representing a company that has some kind of goal either they've identified a problem and they've come to you or you've identified a problem that they have and you've gone to them and and your job is to really listen to that problem in detail and and then try to communicate efficiently a solution that works specifically for them right so so you're not going to give them the same pitch that, that you give everyone you're going to hear like, okay, we, we need to solve this problem this way. And then you're going to say, oh, our product has this feature or, or we could change this and, and make it work in, in this situation. Um, and, um, and, and, and then also try to do that in a way where you're reflecting your company well and, 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 and you're, you know, you're giving them confidence in your company that, that, 
that you are someone who's going to be there for them and, and be reliable as well. And where do you find those businesses or, or the right people in those businesses, let's say? So in, in the early days of the company, it was really, you know, outbound and, and really, really, you know, knocking on people's doors and trying to, trying to, um, you know, get warm intros to this company or that company. And, um, and when, whenever you do an outbound, you should always try to ask that person, you know, if there's anyone that they know and, 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 and you kind of build your network and probably in the really early days, your company won't be impressive enough to actually land the sale, mm-hmm. but those people, you can build that relationship and, and you might end up closing them. You know, Keep knocking on the door time. basically. <laughs> yeah. 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 And, 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 you know, write notes on, on everything as well. Um, and then as, as you grow, um, well, as we grow, we, we've started to get a lot more inbounds. So, so as we're doing this content marketing, um, or as we're serving customers, that's kind of word of mouth coming in. So at, as, as you're growing, you should make sure that your, your website or, or your, your digital presence makes it easy for people to, to register their interest with you and, and get in touch as well. Sure, yeah, and there seems to be a point at which if you get enough key, um, key reference suppliers or key reference clients, that mm-hmm. the industry kind of wants to catch up with those people because they're competitors essentially, and you'll be able to sell more to those businesses. So that, that's probably how your inbound also grows as they, your, your solution works and is being used by people in the industry. So that's uh, yeah. some, some good advice there. Where will your business be in three to five years? In three to five years, Transact is, is going to be something that's, that's used by, by mainstream people. And you probably won't know that you're using Transact, but, but um, right now we're, we're serving a niche model and, and, and the kind of apps that, that we're serving are used by people who, who are really into um, crypto, kind of uh, tinfoil hat people, if you will, in, mm-hmm. in the same way that, that in the early days of the internet, it was, you know, people who, who were just kind of um, geeks and, and, and interested in the space. Yeah, it's funny. It's been around 10 years and it's still got that connotation with it you know it's still got a, a dodgy sort of bad rep you know um even though yeah. it's it's come in leaps and bounds in the last few years in terms of progress but still has that dodgy reputation i, I find anyway yeah i i think i think you know um in in retrospect it looks like the internet just popped up one day and was very popular but at the same time it took it took you know um decades for for you know HTTP and, and mm. um, all of these protocols to be developed and um, to actually build viable applications on it took a long, long time. And I, I think now we're, we're kind of getting there where, where you're getting useful blockchain applications, you know, somewhere where you can actually invest money and it's safe and reliable and you can earn a high interest rate. Yeah. So, so it is a big, big challenge what you're saying. Uh, I think we're step by step, we're, we're kind of getting there. I think that once once it comes, it's going to be hard to stop. You know, in, in a sense, you know, for example, chip and pin. You know, uh, people said, "Oh, chip and pin is not catching on, and no one wants to pay with this." But once once it's actually implemented, like everyone yeah, everyone now, wants to use yeah, it. Yeah, now we have tap as well. I actually I lived in a yeah. country where a chip and pin still wasn't there as far back as 2018. Like you're still signing <laughs> signing for, for a piece of paper. And now and yeah. then you go back to Ireland or, or sorry, the, the modern world and you just, you're tapping, you know, so. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. So maybe, maybe, a, maybe a funny way to, to end the answer, but it will be kind of and uh, in everyday lives in the same way as chip and pin and, and, and there won't be any coming back from that. So Transact won't exactly be a household name, but it'll be something that is used by people every day nearly, hopefully. And that's, that's the vision three to five years time. Yeah, it, 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 will, it will be a, more of a sort of business hold name, if you will. Something like Stripe or, or, or something like that. Okay, great. Okay, um, well, thanks very much for coming on the show. <laughs> um, and I, I loved it. I, I really like talking about cryptocurrency and I wish we could get more uh, companies that are in that space. <laughs> so, um, I found it really insightful and I hope yeah. this, this conversations about, these conversations about crypto, I hope also change people's attitudes towards it because it's still seen as a dodgy space but in reality it's coming to a town near you very very soon and you'll be using yeah. it already realizing it so that's pretty yeah. fascinating um 
so yeah thanks for coming on sammy um it was great and uh thank you all for watching and we'll see you soon for another episode of break even by breakfast Thank you.